Hello, hello, hello. So I just woke up and I thought, let me make a video on yesterday's video. I posted the video on the most famous and best and very popular Blender batch renderer on how to render multiple files at once. So I thought I'll just yeah, show you what it is, how it works, because yeah, you couldn't really see that yesterday. So let me open it up. So first, you're just going to open that up. It's just a standalone file. When you open it up the first time, you might have to accept some window defender thing so I can basically track down your bank data and steal your credit information. So just don't worry about that and just hit all the green ticks so I can get all that bank info. Um, next, you're just going to drag and drop your blend files. It will take some time. I had to do it this way before it was very quick, but the problem is when I load the scenes, I actually have to load the blender file. So when you drag and drop the files for the first time, uh, it will load per file. And if these are big files, it will load longer. So then you can select the scenes because yeah, first I didn't have this, but I think it's a necessary feature. It will automatically add a render path that is where the file is. So now it used the desktop, but I could also change it, uh, take away the folder, whatever. It's just as it is, as you would do in Blender. You can enable and disable certain files so you don't have to render all files and you can delete all files and now they're gone, but you could also move all files. When you move the files back in, it will basically reset everything and yeah, reload. So it's a bit annoying, but you won't be using this tool just on the fly anyways, this will be a tool for yeah rendering big files and a lot of files over nights or days. So yeah, I'm sure you can wait these few seconds to get this app launched. Oh, one very important thing. Um, so here you need the correct um, Blender file so it can actually open it and I made it turn red. I think it should always consistent, consistently turn red but I wouldn't trust it 100%. So if something doesn't work, check that this is correct. You can just browse and go to the right location. So now we're going to actually use this. So this is basically one to one as you know it in Blender, but with the most important and key settings for a final rendering. So I didn't want to add too much, but also not too little. So only the most important things. So if you want to render out a quick preview render of all your files, which would be pretty annoying usually. So on bigger projects, we sometimes have 15 uh, shots. So yeah, setting this for each shot is very annoying and that's why I or we've been using um, a tool, not exactly this tool for many years. So I decided to wrap it up to a tool. Um, but yeah, basically we're using this for many years. Um, yeah, so yeah, you got the override function, everything you know, you got a console in case something breaks or the app crashes, you can maybe find out what it is. Um, yeah, and you just hit render. So this will also reopen the blender scene. So on the first time of rendering, it will take some seconds depending on the size of the files and then it will go straight into rendering. So here uh, you can see it's gonna give you some info. So what files on it's rendering file one, two or three. Okay. It's going really quick because I have low um, size and it's only rendering five frames. Actually, I thought I had more. But yeah, so that went pretty quick. It rendered successfully all the 15 frames. Actually, I can set this way higher real quick. Um, so you can maybe get a little bit more info because it actually shows you how long the rendering will take, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, so what else exactly? You put it onto the desktop right here. It made the folders as it should and rendered everything in here, just like that. Um, yeah, so here you would see the estimated render time is 19 seconds. So this is pretty nice. So if you have too low or too high settings and you just want to measure it for the night, you can roughly measure it at eight or 10 hours. But obviously if one file renders way slower than the other, then this estimate will be wrong. So the estimate is only based on what it has rendered so far. So if suddenly towards the end, the renderings are taking very long, then this time will be wrong. But yeah, obviously, there's no real exact way to render that, uh, to calculate that. Um, what else is there to know? So one pretty cool thing is obviously a necessary feature. Um, you can save the file um, somewhere onto your desktop and call it uh, the project name um, like that. 
and then you have this file right here. So the next time you close this, you can just open it up again. Then you can just hit load, load, go to desktop, whoop, whoop, and open it. And then it's going to take some time. It has to open the Blender files. Doop. Doop. And doop. So there you have it. All your render files. You can select everything. Everything's the same settings as before. And you can render everything again as MP4, a preview for the client, whatever you need, you can do it. Um, yeah, that's the tool. That's a tool we've been using for many years. Just as I said, not wrapped up this nicely. So I started doing this actually for myself. And then I realized I might as well sell it. So yeah, there you have it. Um, yeah, there's some help. I got a quick start guide. So the drag and drop the blender files and blah, 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 nothing special. I got a more detailed uh, feature guide if you're interested and just a copyright and about. If you find any bugs, you can message me at hello at Um Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything there is. Maybe let me tell you some things I want to add. So um, a lot of people already mentioned also on LinkedIn, um, or not a lot of a few people I mentioned they would like a Mac support. I think it will run on Mac because it's actually made in Python. So I'll work on that to make a Mac and Linux uh, version of this application. And what I will add, I already think I know how, how I will do it, but um, a so you can render over multiple PCs. So basically, um, the option will somewhere be that you can set how many PCs you have, and then just set that this is PC A, the next one you run the same software with the same preset is PC B, and so on. And basically what the app will do is just split it down logically into four PCs, if there's four PCs. So yeah, this is a feature I will add. Um, yeah, but this is what it is right now. This is the first version that works. Um, I did a ton of bug fixing. I can't even believe myself how long this took. There were so many bugs correlated with other add-ons and Blender and other PCs. And yeah, but it's. I think everything's fixed now. Everything should work now. Yeah, and these are the two features I will add, Mac and Linux support and yeah, multiple PC rendering. Yeah, that's it. Um, if you're interested in this tool and supporting this tool so I can keep developing it and make it the best tool on the whole internet if it isn't already, obviously. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Have fun and see you next time. Bye-bye.